everyone. So for today, we'll be working on a solution for problem set 6, which is Mario Mall. So do note that this is actually the walkthrough for week 6 Mario Mall. So if you're actually working on week 1's Mario Mall solution, please do check out my other video linked in the description below. So now I'm sure we're all very familiar with this problem set that we did earlier during the course. So while I'll still go through the logic of the solution, we'll be focusing more on the Python syntax of the solution. So in this problem set, what we need to do is to print this pyramid as seen in Mario. And to do so, we need to prompt the user for the height, and their input will determine the height of our pyramid that we will print in hashes. So what are the parameters of this? The user must key in a positive integer that is between 1 and 8 inclusive. So if the user keys in 3, this is the pyramid that should appear. Likewise, if the height is 6, and if the height is 2. If the user keys in the wrong input, there is anything that is not an integer between 1 and 8 inclusive, the system will keep prompting the user for the input until a valid one is received, then it will print the pyramid. So before we continue, just want to say thank you for watching this video and I really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. This really helps with the YouTube algorithm and it will continue to bump up my videos for others who are looking for this solution walkthrough as well. Now moving on, what will be the structure of our code? So firstly, the user will be prompted to key in the height that we must validate where it should be an integer between 1 and 8 inclusive. So the system will need to print a pyramid where the height depends on what the user key in. So let's work on this first. So as mentioned, for this walkthrough, we'll be spending more time comparing the differences between C and Python syntax, as we already covered the solution in my week 1's video. So if you have not watched it, please refer to the link in the description for that. So one tip that really helped me was to actually refer to the lecture notes that was provided for week 6. So this actually was a very helpful compilation of Python syntax and you should check it out too. So for this step, what we need to do is to get the user to key in an integer that is between 1 and 8 inclusive. So in C, this is what we had worked out, where we used a do while loop. So this means that we will keep running the prompt for the user to key in the input as long as the input received is either less than 1 or more than 8. So what would this look like in Python? So according to lecture 6 notes, it states that while there is no do while loop in Python, we can actually achieve the same effect with while true. So this is a sample that they gave us in the notes where the parts in blue are actually what we need to modify to suit our Mario solution. So you can see while true means that whatever comes after that will run perpetually unless a certain condition is met. So while true n equals to get int height where we prompt the user for height. So in this example, as long as height is greater than zero, we use break. And this will actually exit the loop if we met the particular condition we're looking for. So that is, if the input meets the condition we're looking for, we will use break such that we can continue with the rest of the program. So what will our condition look like in Python? So we need to exit the loop if the height key in is between 1 and 8 in inclusive. And that is, if n is greater than 0 and n is less than 9, then we will break. So let's write our program for this. So we'll start first by importing get int from the CS50 library. So we here we'll use while true n equals to get int height to prompt the user to key in the height. And then after that we will say if n is greater than 0 and n is less than 9, then we will break. And then we'll continue with the rest of the program. Next we'll print the hashes. So for example, if height equals to 5, the pyramid will look like this. So in our walkthrough for week 1, we actually discussed how we will need to print this pyramid based on a grid using a nested loop. We then had to figure out the formula for the system to know when to print the blank spaces represented by a dot here for easier visualization and when to print hashes. So as mentioned, I will not go through the logic of how to derive the formula for this as we've already covered it in week 1's walkthrough. So if you need some guidance for that, I do recommend that you watch week 1's video that I've linked in the description below. So for us to start printing the pyramid, we will need to do a nested loop but we need to tell the system how many rows and how many columns to print. Now, it's easy for us to tell the system how many rows to print as the number of rows will just equal to the height that the user had keyed in. But the columns to print will actually be a bit trickier to work out and we need a formula for this. So here's the visualization. So if height equals to 1, this is the pyramid that we will print and you can see that the number of columns to print is when j equals to 3. So next, when height equals to 2, i equals to 1 and j equals to 5. Likewise, when height equals to 3, j equals to 7. And if height equals to 4, j equals to 9. And when height equals to 5, j equals to 11. So we need a formula to tell the system to print how many columns. And the one that we came up with is that the number of columns to print is n plus i plus 2. 
for the system of print columns, as long as the number of columns, that is, j is less than n plus i plus 3. So moving on, we then look at row i and column j. Then we number the number of rows and columns. And we need a formula that will tell the system to print dots for these and hashes for the rest. So let's start with the easier part first. So that is to print the dots in this column that I've circled in red. So you can see quite simply that we will print the dots when column j equals to n, which is your height. And moving on, for the next column, it will actually be dots as well. And that is when j equals to n plus 1. Next, we need to figure out the formula that will tell the system when to print the dots in this case that I've circled in red. So starting with the first row where i equals to 0, when j equals to 0, i plus j equals to 0, we print a dot. And moving on, when j equals to 1, i plus j equals to 1, we print a dot. And again, when j equals to 2 and 3, we print dots. Next, when i equals to 0 and j equals to 4, i plus j equals to 4, we print a hash. So up to this point, you can see that we print a dot when i plus j is less than n minus 1, and a hash when i plus j equals to n minus 1. So moving on to the next row, we list down the cases where we print dots and hashes as seen on the screen. So our formula is as follows. So testing it with the next row, our formula still applies. So we can conclude that the system will print a dot, which is actually a space in the program that we'll run later, as long as i plus j is less than n minus 1. So recall that this is what we had in C, where we had our nested loop, and then we put in a formula that we have derived. So what would this actually look like in Python syntax? So according to the lecture 6 notes, it states that we can use the special function that is range to get any number of values, and that range actually takes in other functions as well. So putting this into use for our case, it will actually be for i in range 0 and 1 because we will start from where i equals to 0 up to n and we will increase our i value by 1 for every loop. For j, remember that we will print columns as long as j is less than n plus i plus 3, hence it looks like this. Then we will print a space for the three conditions that we have found, that is when j equals to n or j equals to n plus 1 or i plus j is less than n minus 1. So notice we have something additional here called end. So this is to specify that nothing should be printed at the end of our string. Then we will print a hash for all other cases, and again we need end here. So if you found this video helpful so far, do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That really really helps the channel a lot and I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support. So now let's finish off our program in Python. So let's move on. We will say for i in range, let me close the gap, 0 and 1 that we have discussed earlier on. Now we'll say for j in range, 0, n plus i plus 3 that we have worked out earlier. And then now we'll say when we will print our blank space, which is when j equals to n, or j equals to n plus 1, or i plus j is less than n minus 1. So we'll print our blank space here, and then we'll remember to use the end. And for all the cases, we will actually print a hash. So we'll just close this up. So let's compile this, python mario.py. So let's try an incorrect input first. Now when height equals to 1, this is our pyramid. Again, when height equals to 4, it looks good. And again, when height equals to 6, it looks good as well. So this is the pyramid that we're looking for. And there you go. So this is the solution for problem set 6, Mario More Sentimental. Thank you so much for supporting this video and for watching it. If you found it helpful, do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next videos for the rest of week 6 problem sets. See you there.